The 4-Hour Work Week by Timothy Ferris is a self-help book that provides a blueprint for designing your dream lifestyle by escaping the traditional 9-to-5 work week. The preface sets the tone for the book by introducing the concept of lifestyle design and challenging the notion that work and retirement should be separate phases of life. Ferris believes that the key to a fulfilling life is to focus on experiences and personal growth rather than accumulating material possessions. He encourages readers to question their assumptions and redefine their priorities, urging them to embrace the concept of many retirements and travel while they are young instead of waiting until retirement. The preface also includes a warning to readers about the pitfalls of the deferred life plan and the importance of taking action now to create the life you want. Ferris emphasizes the need to automate and outsource tasks to free up time and energy for more important pursuits. He also introduces the concept of lifestyle arbitrage, where individuals can leverage technology and the global market to achieve a higher standard of living for less money. The preface serves as a call to action for readers to rethink their assumptions about work and lifestyle and to take control of their future by embracing the principles outlined in the book. Step I, D is for Definition. Chapter 1, Cautions and Comparisons, How to Burn $1 Million a Night. In Chapter 1, Ferris explains the importance of questioning our assumptions about work and retirement. He argues that the traditional 9 to 5 work week is outdated and ineffective, and that the concept of retirement is flawed. Ferris uses the cautionary tale of a night at the trendy New York City Club Lotus to illustrate how easy it is to burn through money and waste time without a clear purpose or plan. Ferris encourages readers to challenge their assumptions about what is possible and to question why they work so hard. He suggests that people should focus on creating value and building skills that can be leveraged to create a flexible lifestyle, rather than simply accumulating wealth. Ferris emphasizes the importance of setting clear goals and using metrics to track progress, rather than relying on subjective feelings of success. The chapter also includes tips for creating a low-maintenance lifestyle by outsourcing and automating tasks. Ferris argues that by focusing on what truly matters, such as personal growth, relationships, and experiences, individuals can achieve a higher quality of life with less stress and fewer expenses. The chapter serves as a wake-up call for readers to examine their priorities and take action to create a more fulfilling life. Chapter 2, Rules That Change the Rules, Everything Popular is Wrong. In Chapter 2, Ferris challenges the conventional wisdom surrounding work and lifestyle. He argues that many widely accepted beliefs about productivity, success, and happiness are outdated and misguided. Ferris suggests that by breaking the rules and adopting a contrarian mindset, individuals can achieve greater success and fulfillment. Ferris introduces the concept of lifestyle design and encourages readers to reject the traditional 9-to-5 work week and embrace a more flexible and fulfilling lifestyle. He advocates for working smarter, not harder, and leveraging technology and outsourcing to free up time and energy. Ferris also emphasizes the importance of focusing on high-impact activities and ignoring distractions and low-value tasks. The chapter includes practical tips for implementing the rules that change the rules, such as practicing selective ignorance and cultivating a sense of urgency. Ferris argues that by adopting a contrarian mindset and challenging the status quo, individuals can achieve more in less time and with less stress. The chapter serves as a call to action for readers to question their assumptions and embrace unconventional strategies for success. Before we continue, we would like to inform you that we release these summaries in audio format on Spotify before we release them on YouTube in video format, with subtitles. We have also created a goldmine of information which you can get exclusive access to by supporting us on Patreon. You get in-depth summaries plus scripts, usually twice the length of our YouTube content, a list of the top 20 key takeaways and exercises, summary requests, and more. Thank you for the support and don't forget to hit the like button. Chapter 3, Dodging Bullets, Fear Setting and Escaping Paralysis In Chapter 3, Ferris discusses the importance of confronting and overcoming fear in order to achieve success. Ferris introduces the concept of fear setting, a process for identifying and mitigating potential risks and worst-case scenarios. By confronting and planning for potential failure, individuals can reduce anxiety and gain the confidence to take bold action. Ferris provides a step-by-step guide to fear setting, which involves identifying the worst possible outcomes, 
preventing or minimizing those outcomes, and developing a plan for recovery if they occur. He emphasizes that the benefits of taking action often outweigh the risks, and that an action can lead to missed opportunities and regret. The chapter includes practical tips for implementing fear setting, such as breaking down large goals into small, manageable steps, and seeking out mentors and role models for guidance and support. Ferris also discusses the importance of focusing on the process rather than the outcome, and embracing failure as a learning opportunity. Overall, the chapter serves as a powerful reminder that fear can be overcome through preparation, planning, and action. By confronting our fears and taking calculated risks, we can achieve greater success and fulfillment in all areas of life. Chapter 4, System Reset, Being Unreasonable and Unambiguous In Chapter 4, Ferris discusses the importance of clarity and simplicity in achieving success. He argues that most people are bogged down by complexity and ambiguity, which leads to inefficiency and wasted time. Ferris suggests that by simplifying and streamlining our lives, we can achieve greater focus and productivity. Ferris introduces the concept of the not-to-do list, which involves identifying and eliminating activities that do not contribute to our goals. He also emphasizes the importance of setting clear priorities and goals, and focusing on the few activities that will have the greatest impact. The chapter includes practical tips for implementing a system reset, such as using the 80-20 principle to identify high-impact activities, and creating a daily schedule that prioritizes the most important tasks. Ferris also discusses the importance of being unreasonable and challenging our assumptions about what is possible. Overall, the chapter serves as a reminder that simplicity and clarity are powerful tools for achieving success. By eliminating distractions and focusing on the few activities that truly matter, we can achieve more with less effort and live a more fulfilling life. Step 2, E is for Elimination. Chapter 5, The End of Time Management, Illusions and Italians. Chapter 5 challenges the traditional notion of time management and introduces the concept of lifestyle design. Timothy Ferris argues that focusing on efficiency and productivity alone is not enough to achieve a fulfilling life. Instead, we should aim to design our lives around our passions and interests. Ferris draws on his experience living in Italy, where he observed a culture that valued leisure time and enjoyed a slower pace of life. He suggests that we can adopt this mindset by focusing on the activities that bring us joy and fulfillment, and eliminating those that do not. The chapter includes practical tips for applying lifestyle design, such as creating a dreamline that outlines our ideal lifestyle and identifying the steps necessary to achieve it. Ferris also emphasizes the importance of eliminating unnecessary work and delegating tasks to others. Overall, the chapter encourages readers to rethink their approach to time management and prioritize their personal goals and interests. By focusing on lifestyle design, we can achieve a more meaningful and enjoyable life, rather than simply striving for more hours in the day. Chapter 6, The Low Information Diet, Cultivating Selective Ignorance In Chapter 6, Ferris discusses the negative impact of information overload and introduces the concept of the low information diet. He argues that we are bombarded with more information than we can ever hope to process, which can lead to anxiety, indecision, and wasted time. Ferris suggests that we should become more selective about the information we consume, focusing only on that which is essential and meaningful to our lives. He offers practical tips for implementing a low-information diet, such as reducing news consumption, limiting social media use, and avoiding irrelevant emails and meetings. The chapter also includes a section on the benefits of batching, or grouping similar tasks together to maximize efficiency and reduce distractions. By batching emails, phone calls, and other routine tasks, we can minimize the amount of time spent on non-essential activities and free up more time for meaningful work and leisure. Overall, the chapter encourages readers to take a more mindful and deliberate approach to information consumption, focusing only on that which is essential and meaningful to their lives. By doing so, we can reduce stress and anxiety, maximize our productivity, and reclaim more time for the things that truly matter. Chapter 7, Interrupting Interruption and the Art of Refusal In Chapter 7, Ferris discusses the importance of learning how to say no and protecting your time from interruptions. 
he advises readers to create an interruption-free zone where they can focus on their most important work without being distracted by emails, phone calls, or other interruptions. Ferris suggests batching similar tasks together and dealing with them at designated times during the day to minimize interruptions. He also recommends learning how to say no politely and effectively to avoid taking on too many commitments that will distract from your goals. Ferris suggests using templates to respond to requests and delegating tasks when possible. He stresses that protecting your time and focusing on your priorities is essential to achieving your goals and living a fulfilling life. Overall, the chapter provides practical tips for managing interruptions and protecting your time to maximize productivity and achieve your goals. Step 3, A is for Automation. Chapter 8, Outsourcing Life, Offloading the Rest and a Taste of Geo-Arbitrage. In Chapter 8, Ferris discusses the concept of outsourcing, which involves delegating tasks to other people or companies. Ferris emphasizes the importance of outsourcing mundane, time-consuming tasks to free up one's time to focus on more important and enjoyable activities. He also discusses the benefits of geo-arbitrage, which involves taking advantage of the cost of living differences between countries to increase one's purchasing power. Ferris provides several examples of how to outsource effectively, including creating a job description, setting clear expectations, and using online platforms to find suitable candidates. He also offers tips for managing remote workers, such as using screen sharing software and setting up regular communication channels. Finally, Ferris encourages readers to think creatively about outsourcing and to consider using services such as virtual assistants, concierge services, and personal shoppers to simplify their lives and achieve greater productivity. Chapter 9, Income Autopilot I, Finding the Muse In Chapter 9, Ferris introduces the concept of the muse, a product or service that generates passive income with minimal management. He suggests identifying a small market niche that is passionate about a particular product or service, and outsourcing the production and marketing to third-party contractors. Ferris advises readers to avoid spending time and money on product development until there is a proven demand and a profitable business model. Instead, he recommends using idea extraction techniques to identify the pain points and desires of potential customers, and then reverse engineering a solution that meets their needs. Ferris also stresses the importance of creating a compelling brand that resonates with the target market, and leveraging inexpensive online tools to build a website and generate traffic. Finally, he advises readers to test different marketing channels and pricing strategies to optimize profitability. Chapter 10, Income Autopilot 2, Testing the Muse In Chapter 10, Ferris discusses how to test a business idea with the least amount of time and money possible. Ferris introduces the concept of idea extraction, which involves finding a market need and then developing a product or service to fill that need. The goal is to create a business that can be run passively, without requiring a significant amount of time or energy. To test an idea, Ferris recommends creating a minimum viable product, MVP, and then using various methods to get feedback from potential customers. Ferris emphasizes the importance of focusing on the 20% of features that will produce 80% of the value for customers. He also advises using a variety of tools and platforms to get feedback, including surveys, landing pages, and Google AdWords. Ferris concludes the chapter by discussing the importance of being willing to pivot if necessary. He stresses that the goal is not to create the perfect business idea, but rather to test and iterate quickly to find a profitable model that can run on autopilot. Chapter 11, Income Autopilot 3, MBA, Management by Absence Chapter 11 describes how to manage a business remotely, even when you're not physically present. He emphasizes that entrepreneurs need to establish clear guidelines and set specific goals for their team. He also advises business owners to use technology to automate repetitive tasks and to track the progress of their business. Ferris introduces the concept of virtual assistants and encourages readers to hire them to delegate tasks and free up more time. To manage a business remotely, Ferris recommends that business owners should establish a reporting system that is simple and efficient, with only the necessary information included. He emphasizes the importance of using key performance indicators, KPIs, to track the progress of the business. Ferris believes that it is possible to manage a business from anywhere in the world, 
and he encourages readers to use technology to their advantage. He also suggests that entrepreneurs take regular breaks to avoid burnout and to enjoy the benefits of their hard work. Step 4, L is for Liberation. Chapter 12, Disappearing Act, How to Escape the Office. In this chapter, Ferris discusses how to design a lifestyle that allows you to work remotely, travel the world, and achieve location independence. The chapter begins by challenging the traditional notion that we need to work in an office to be productive. Ferris provides examples of companies that have successfully embraced remote work, such as Automatic, the company behind WordPress, and 37 Signals, a software company that allows employees to work from anywhere in the world. Ferris then provides practical advice on how to transition to a remote work lifestyle. He suggests starting by negotiating a work-from-home arrangement with your current employer, or by finding a job that offers remote work opportunities. He also recommends using technology to stay connected with colleagues, and to optimize your work environment for productivity. The chapter also includes advice on how to travel the world while working remotely, including tips on choosing the right destinations, managing time zone differences, and dealing with visa requirements. Ferris also touches on the concept of geo-arbitrage, which involves taking advantage of the cost of living differences between different countries. Overall, Chapter 12 of the 4-Hour Work Week offers valuable insights and practical advice for anyone looking to break free from the constraints of traditional office work and design a location-independent lifestyle. Chapter 13, Beyond Repair, Killing Your Job In this chapter Ferris explores the reasons why we stick to our jobs despite being unhappy and suggests ways to escape them. He advises the reader to view their job as a means to an end rather than an end in itself and to find a way to minimize the time spent working while maximizing the income earned. One way to achieve this is to negotiate with one's employer to work remotely or reduce work hours. Ferris also advises readers to think about the worst-case scenario and how they could bounce back if they quit their job. It is essential to have a backup plan and skills to fall back on. Ferris also suggests using the income generated by the Muse business from the previous chapter to fund living expenses while transitioning out of a full-time job. Overall, the chapter aims to motivate readers to take action and make changes to improve their quality of life, whether it means finding a new job, starting a business, or pursuing a different career path. Chapter 14, Mini Retirements, Embracing the Mobile Lifestyle In Chapter 14, Ferris encourages readers to take many retirements throughout their lives instead of waiting for traditional retirement at age 65. These many retirements, which can last from one month to one year or more, give individuals the opportunity to experience new cultures, learn new skills, and recharge their batteries. Ferris outlines the benefits of many retirements, including the ability to break free from the 9 to 5 work routine, gain new perspectives, and pursue hobbies and interests that may not be feasible during traditional work weeks. He suggests that by taking many retirements, individuals can also gain new insights into their careers and potentially even start their own businesses. To make many retirements possible, Ferris recommends that individuals build businesses or find remote work that can be done from anywhere in the world. He also shares tips for planning and funding many retirements, including reducing expenses, renting out homes, and utilizing travel rewards programs. Overall, Chapter 14 encourages readers to break away from traditional retirement planning and to embrace a mobile lifestyle that prioritizes experiences and personal growth. Chapter 15, Filling the Void, Adding Life After Subtracting Work In Chapter 15, Ferris discusses the importance of filling the void left by work after it has been subtracted from one's life. He argues that it is not enough to simply quit a job and expect happiness to follow. Instead, it is necessary to have a plan for how to fill one's time with meaningful activities. Ferris recommends pursuing hobbies and interests that have been neglected due to work obligations. He also suggests using the newfound free time to engage in new activities and experiences, such as learning a new language or traveling to a new place. Furthermore, Ferris emphasizes the importance of giving back and engaging in charitable activities. He suggests finding a cause that aligns with one's values and dedicating time and resources to making a positive impact. Overall, 
Ferris emphasizes the need to be intentional and proactive about filling the void left by work, rather than simply drifting aimlessly without a sense of purpose. By pursuing meaningful activities and engaging in philanthropy, individuals can create a fulfilling and purposeful life beyond work. Chapter 16 The Top 13 New Rich Mistakes In Chapter 16, Ferris outlines the top 13 mistakes that the new rich tend to make. The first mistake is failing to define what success means to them personally. The second mistake is assuming that they will be happy once they achieve success. The third mistake is putting too much emphasis on money as the ultimate goal. The fourth mistake is following the crowd instead of forging their own path. The fifth mistake is trying to do everything themselves instead of delegating tasks to others. The sixth mistake is trying to be everywhere at once instead of focusing on their core competencies. The seventh mistake is being a perfectionist instead of prioritizing progress. The eighth mistake is failing to set and enforce boundaries. The ninth mistake is being too busy to enjoy their success. The tenth mistake is neglecting their health and wellness. The eleventh mistake is lacking a sense of purpose. The twelfth mistake is failing to give back to their community. The thirteenth and final mistake is forgetting to celebrate their successes along the way. Ferris emphasizes the importance of avoiding these mistakes in order to achieve a fulfilling and successful life. Conclusion In the conclusion of the 4-hour work week, author Timothy Ferris emphasizes the importance of taking action and not just reading or learning about lifestyle design. He encourages readers to apply the principles and tactics outlined in the book to their own lives and to experiment with different ways of living and working. Ferris also reminds readers that the goal of lifestyle design is not to do nothing, but to do meaningful work that aligns with one's values and passions. He argues that it is possible to make a difference in the world while also living a fulfilling and enjoyable life. Finally, Ferris emphasizes the importance of continually re-evaluating and refining one's goals and priorities, as life is constantly changing and evolving. He encourages readers to take ownership of their lives and to design a lifestyle that works for them rather than simply accepting the status quo. Overall, the conclusion serves as a call to action for readers to take control of their lives and to design a fulfilling and enjoyable lifestyle, rather than simply settling for the conventional 9-to-5 grind.